The alien child Murloc screamed in terror as his family's damaged spacecraft fell apart around them. The life support failing, his father badly wounded and bleeding out, as everyone turned a blind eye except for one distant species called humans. The ruthless insectoid Krilthak soldiers had blown Murloc's homeworld to smithereens, decimating cities, slaughtering civilians. Murloc and his parents, Zoran and Arena, barely escaped the burning ruins in a small shuttle. But Zoran took shrapnel to the gut. Now they drifted helplessly through space, running out of air, Zoran's blood pooling on the floor. They sent distress calls, but no one responded, until a Krilthak warship locked onto their signal. The insectoids wanted to finish the job. Help us, anyone, please, Arena cried desperately over the comms. But the nearby alien ships ignored them. The pacifist Zleen, the greedy Orlik, the haughty Binar. They all switched off their comms and warped away. Only a strange new species, calling themselves humans, responded to the call. But the human ship was small, lightly armed, and thirty minutes away. The Krilthak opened fire. The Zorgaxian shuttle's shields failed. They had five minutes left, tops. They didn't know if the humans would make it in time, or if these unknown beings would risk their lives to help strangers of another species. All Murloc and his family could do was pray. The Krilthak warship loomed ever closer, its weapons locked onto the crippled Zorgaxian shuttle. Murloc huddled against his mother, tears streaming down his face as he watched his father struggle to breathe. The pool of purple blood beneath Zoran was growing larger by the second. Suddenly, a chorus of new voices burst through the comms. A small fleet of ships had arrived in response to their distress call, representing various species from across the galaxy. This is the Galactic Council fleet, a firm voice announced. We are assessing the situation. Hope flickered in Arena's eyes. She clutched Murloc tightly as she leaned forward, desperate to hear more. There was a long pause, filled only with the hiss of static. Then a somber voice spoke again. The Zorgaxian family is in grave danger, but we cannot risk a direct confrontation with the Krilthak. Their military might is too great. Murloc's heart sank. He looked up at his mother, seeing the hope drain from her face. We offer our deepest sympathies and support in this trying time. Another voice chimed in, sounding almost bored. Rest assured... We will take diplomatic action against the Krilthak for this atrocity. Diplomatic action, Arena whispered, her voice trembling with rage and despair. My husband is dying, my child is terrified, we need help now. But her pleas were met with silence. The council ships hung back, keeping a safe distance from the looming Krilthak warship. Murloc pressed his face against the cold viewport, watching as the insectoid ship grew larger and larger. He could see the glow of its weapons powering up, ready to deliver the final blow. Mama, he whimpered, burying his face in her shoulder. I'm scared. Arena held him close, her own body shaking with fear and grief. I know, baby, I know. Just as all hope seemed lost, a new voice crackled through the comms. It was deep and commanding, with a strange accent that Murloc had never heard before, this is Captain Marcus Reynolds of the Earth Alliance vessel Resolve, the voice said. We are en route to your location and will arrive in approximately fifteen minutes. Hold on, Zorgaxian shuttle. Help is on the way. Arena's heart raced as she heard the human captain's words. A glimmer of hope sparked within her, even as the Krailthak warship loomed ever closer. She clutched Murloc tightly, whispering reassurances to her terrified child. On the bridge of the Resolve, Captain Reynolds stood tall, his eyes fixed on the viewscreen. The Krilthak vessel filled the display, its angular hull bristling with weapons. Helm set an intercept course, he ordered, his voice steady and calm. Tactical, prepare to engage the enemy ship. We need to give that Zorgaxian shuttle a chance. His crew leaped into action, their fingers flying across consoles as they carried out his commands. The Resolve surged forward, its engines flaring brightly as it raced towards the Krilthak warship. The insectoid ship opened fire, lancing beams of searing energy towards the human vessel, but the resolve was ready, 
Its advanced shields absorbed the brunt of the assault, shimmering with a brilliant blue light as they dissipated the destructive energy. Return fire, Captain Reynolds barked. Target their weapon systems. The Resolve's own weaponry came to life, sending a barrage of missiles and beam weapons towards the Krilthak ship. The human weapons were unlike anything the insectoids had faced before, sleek, powerful, and guided by advanced targeting systems. Explosions blossomed across the Krilthak hull as the human weapons found their mark. The insectoid ship reeled, its own shields straining under the onslaught. In the Zorgaxian shuttle, Murloc watched in awe as the human ship danced around the Krilthak warship, evading its attacks with a grace that belied its size. The resolve seemed to anticipate the insectoid ship's every move, always staying one step ahead. But even as the battle raged, the Zorgaxian shuttle's life support system sputtered and died. The air grew thin and stale, and the temperature plummeted. Murloc shivered, his breath fogging in the frigid air. Irina looked down at Zoran, her heart breaking as she saw the life fading from his eyes. His breaths came in shallow gasps, his purple blood congealing on the floor. Hold on, my love, she whispered, tears streaming down her face. Just a little longer. On the Resolve's bridge, Captain Reynolds watched as the Zorgaxian shuttle's vital signs flickered and faded. He knew they were running out of time. Prepare for emergency transport, he ordered, his voice tight with urgency. Lock onto the Zorgaxian life signs and beam them directly to the medical bay. His crew hesitated for a moment, their eyes widening with surprise. Transporting unknown aliens aboard was a risky move, one that could potentially expose the ship to unforeseen dangers. But Captain Reynolds was adamant. We're not going to let them die out there, he said firmly. Energize. In a shimmering haze of light, Murloc, Arena, and Zoran disappeared from their crippled shuttle and rematerialized on the resolve. They collapsed to the floor of the medical bay, gasping for air and shivering violently. The human medical team leaped into action, their movements swift and precise. They lifted Zoran onto a biobed, their advanced scanners already assessing his injuries. Murloc clutched his mother's hand, his eyes wide with fear and confusion as he took in the strange surroundings. The human ship was unlike anything he had ever seen before, all sleek lines and gleaming metal with technology that seemed almost magical to his young mind. But even in the midst of his fear, Murloc couldn't help but feel a spark of hope. The humans had risked everything to save his family, even when no one else would. They had shown a courage and compassion that he had never seen before. As the medical team worked frantically to stabilize Zoran, Captain Reynolds stepped into the room. He looked down at Murloc and Irina, his eyes filled with a warmth and kindness that transcended the barriers of species and language. You're safe now, he said softly. We'll do everything we can to help your family. And for the first time since the Krilthak had attacked their homeworld, Murloc felt a glimmer of hope for the future. The human medical bay was a flurry of activity as the doctors and nurses worked to save Zoran's life. They moved with a sense of urgency, their hands a blur as they applied pressure to the gaping wound in his abdomen. Murloc watched in awe as they used strange devices that emitted beams of light and hummed with energy. One doctor, a tall human with kind eyes, leaned over Zoran and spoke in a soothing voice. Stay with us, Zoran. You're in good hands now. Murloc couldn't understand the words, but the tone was comforting. He clung to his mother's hand as she wept softly, her eyes fixed on her husband's still form. The human doctors worked for what felt like hours, their brows furrowed with concentration. They used techniques and technology that Murloc had never seen before, even in the most advanced hospitals on his homeworld. Finally, the tall doctor stepped back and wiped his brow. He turned to Arena and spoke softly. He's stable now. We've repaired the damage to his internal organs and stopped the bleeding. He'll need time to recover, but he's going to be okay. Harina let out a sob of relief and pulled Murloc close. Thank you, she whispered, her voice trembling. Thank you so much. The doctor smiled warmly and placed a hand on her shoulder. You're welcome. We're just glad we could help. 
As the doctors continued to monitor Zoran's condition, Captain Reynolds entered the medical bay. He was a tall, broad-shouldered human with a kind face and eyes that sparkled with intelligence. He approached Irina and Murloc, kneeling down to be at eye level with the young Zorgaxian. Hello, Murloc, he said softly. I'm Captain Reynolds. I want you to know that you and your family are safe now. You can stay on our ship for as long as you need. Murloc looked up at the captain, his eyes wide with wonder. Why did you help us? he asked, his voice small and uncertain. No one else would. Captain Reynolds smiled and placed a hand on Murloc's shoulder. Because it's what we do, he said simply. Humans have a saying. Leave no man behind. It means that we never abandon those in need, no matter who they are or where they come from. Murloc felt tears welling up in his eyes. He had never encountered such kindness and selflessness before, especially not from a species he had never even heard of. But you could have been hurt, he said, his voice trembling. The Krilthak are so strong, why would you risk your lives for us? Captain Reynolds looked at Murloc with a serious expression. Because it's the right thing to do, he said firmly. We humans believe that every life is precious, no matter what species they are. We couldn't stand by and watch innocent people suffer, not when we had the power to help. Murloc felt a wave of emotion wash over him. He had always been taught that the galaxy was a cold and unforgiving place where only the strong survived. But here were these humans, risking everything to save a family they had never even met before. Thank you, he whispered, his voice choked with tears. Thank you for saving us. Captain Reynolds smiled and pulled Murloc into a gentle hug. You're welcome, little one, he said softly. You're safe now, and we'll do everything we can to help you and your family find a new home. As Murloc clung to the captain, he felt a sense of hope and gratitude that he had never experienced before. The humans had shown him that there was still good in the galaxy, that there were still those who would stand up for what was right, no matter the cost. And for the first time since the Krilthak had attacked, Murloc allowed himself to believe that maybe, just maybe, everything would be okay. Captain Reynolds stood tall on the bridge of the Resolve, his eyes fixed on the viewscreen as he addressed the Galactic Council. The Zorgaxian family, safe in the ship's medical bay, weighed heavily on his mind as he prepared to confront the council members who had abandoned them in their time of need. Esteemed members of the Galactic Council, he began, his voice steady and filled with conviction, I come before you today not as a representative of humanity, but as a sentient being who believes in the inherent value of all life. The council members shifted uncomfortably in their seats, their holographic images flickering slightly, as they avoided the captain's piercing gaze. When the Zorgaxian family sent out their distress call, they were met with silence and indifference. Reynolds continued, his words cutting through the tense atmosphere. They were left to die, alone and frightened, while the Krilthak warship bore down upon them. He paused, letting his words sink in. Is this what the Galactic Council stands for? Is this the legacy we wish to leave behind? The council chamber erupted in a flurry of whispers and murmurs. Some members looked away in shame, while others bristled at the captain's accusatory tone. We had no choice, one council member spoke up, his voice trembling slightly. The Krilthak are too powerful. We couldn't risk a confrontation. Reynolds fixed the council member with a steely gaze. No choice, he repeated, his voice rising with each word. There is always a choice. You chose to prioritize your own safety over the lives of innocent beings. You chose cowardice over compassion. The council member flinched, his holographic image flickering as he sank back into his seat. The purpose of this council is to protect and support all sentient life, regardless of species or origin, Reynolds continued, his voice filled with passion. If we cannot uphold that basic principle, then what is the point of our existence? A hushed silence fell over the council chamber. Some members looked down at their hands, while others exchanged uneasy glances. I implore you, Reynolds said, his voice softening slightly. Let this incident serve as a wake-up call. 
Let us recommit ourselves to the values that brought us together in the first place. Let us stand up for what is right, even in the face of adversity. Slowly, hesitantly, several council members began to nod their heads. A few even spoke up, their voices filled with a newfound sense of purpose. Captain Reynolds is right, one member said, her voice trembling with emotion. We have lost our way, we must do better. I pledge to take a more active role in protecting vulnerable populations, another member chimed in, his voice filled with determination. We cannot stand idly by while innocent lives are lost. As the council members voiced their support, Reynolds felt a sense of hope and pride swelling in his chest. He knew that this was only the beginning, that there was still much work to be done, but for now he allowed himself a moment of satisfaction, knowing that he had played a small part in steering the Galactic Council back towards the path of righteousness. In the medical bay, Murloc and his family watched the proceedings on a view screen, their hearts filled with gratitude and admiration for the human captain who had risked everything to save them. He's a hero, Murloc whispered, his eyes wide with wonder. A true hero. Irina nodded, tears streaming down her face as she clutched her son close. We owe him our lives, she said softly, and we will spend the rest of our days working to bring our two peoples closer together. As the resolve continued on its journey through the stars, Murloc knew that his life had been forever changed. He had seen firsthand the power of compassion and courage, and he vowed to carry those lessons with him for the rest of his days. And though the road ahead would be long and fraught with challenges, Murloc knew that he would face them with the same bravery and determination that Captain Reynolds had shown, for he had seen the best of humanity, and he knew that together they could build a better future for all the beings of the galaxy. E. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.